In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through chapter 4.7, Inflation. Firstly, the definition of inflation is the sustained rise in the general price level in an economy over a period of time. What this really means is that the average prices of everything within the country or the economy will rise. So the value or the purchasing power of your money decreases or falls. This is measured by the Consumer Price Index, also known as the CPI. More on this later, and hyperinflation refers to very high levels of inflation in a very short period of time. For example, Venezuela experienced 10 million percent inflation in 2019, according to the IMF. I'll give you some context in the severity of this problem. Say you had a million dollars in 2019. After 10 million percent inflation, your one million dollars is worth, or the value of one million dollars in 2020 will be worth ten dollars. So as you can see, the purchasing power of a million dollars has significantly gone down. Deflation. So this is a sustained fall in the general price of an economy over time. So this means that prices of goods and services will fall in a deflationary environment. This is usually due to two factors, which is technological progress, which increases supply of all goods and services, or a fall in demand for the product. And problems only arise if it's a fall in aggregate demand, such as a recession. So how do governments measure inflation? They measure it using the CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index. And this is represented by a basket of goods which is consumed by the average household. And the basket has statistical weights of the products and is based on the proportion of income spent on the goods. And how they measure inflation, they compare the cost of the same basket of goods today compared to last year. And if that basket of goods is 2% more expensive compared to last year, the country would have experienced 2% inflation. Moving on to the causes and consequences of inflation. Demand pull inflation is triggered by high levels of total demand or aggregate demand. This is usually evident in an economic boom. This is usually because people have very high confidence in the economy, very high levels of disposable income, so they feel the need to spend it within the economy. This raises aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2 and price levels to P1 to P2. This type of inflation is considered acceptable because it raises real GDP from Q1 to Q2. The next type of inflation is cost push inflation, and this is triggered by higher costs of production, which leads to businesses charging higher prices for their goods and services. The cost in question includes wages, raw materials, rent, and many other business inputs. The result of this will shift aggregate supply from AS1 to AS2 and increases the price levels from P1 to P2, which results in cost push inflation. This is less desirable because, as you can see, there is a contraction in the real GDP from Q1 to Q2. So the consequences of inflation to consumers is that their purchasing power decreases as everything is getting more expensive. This means that they experience a fall in their real income. Real income is calculated by their income minus the inflation rate. If consumer incomes do not increase with the rate of inflation, they will be able to buy less goods and services with the same amount of income. The consequences for workers is that their real salaries will fall. So what they do is they demand higher pay. So if they get a 4% raise in their salaries with a 5% rate of inflation, their real pay is minus 1%. This usually harms the lowest income earners. Let me tell you why. 
as people on low income are spending the majority of their money on essentials. These essentials include food, housing, transport, healthcare, and basic clothing. So if they are spending more money on these necessities, there is no money for other goods. So their standard of living falls. The consequences for firms is that they experience a higher cost of production as workers demand higher pay. Things called menu costs will increase as price lists and menus will need to be changed. And due to the higher prices, this makes exports more expensive, decreasing the level of competitiveness in the international market. And at the same time, imports become more expensive due to the loss of purchasing power. Savers are significantly disadvantaged because their money is now worth less. So if you had a million dollars in the bank account, the year later, at a rate of 2% inflation, this will be worth $980,000. There is a big disincentive to save. For lenders, they also lose from inflation, as the purchasing power of the money paid back in the future will be worth less. So they need a large incentive for them to lend, and the incentive is to add interest on the money lent out. Borrowers actually gain from inflation as the value of their debt is now worth less. So if you borrow the million dollars today at 0% interest, at a 5% inflation rate compounded over 10 years, this will be only worth $598,000. So overall, the economy as a whole, the winners will be the borrowers and the losers will be the consumers, employees, savers, lenders and producers. So now we move on to the policies to control inflation. Firstly, we have fiscal policy. The government can decide to raise taxes which decreases people's disposable income. And with less disposable income, the aggregate demand within the economy will fall. Or they can use austerity, which is to cut government spending. Cutting government spending will ultimately mean there will be less jobs available, increasing unemployment, decreasing disposable income, and decreasing aggregate demand, which controls inflation. However, this is highly unlikely and political suicide. They can also use monetary policy, which is to increase the interest rate. This makes borrowing money more expensive, so it decreases. This leads to a decrease in investments and spending, which are components of aggregate demand. And ultimately, savings will increase because of the increased rate of return. And lastly, we have supply-side policies. This will increase the total productive capacity of the economy increase competition and innovation, thus aggregate supply will shift to the right which lowers the price of all goods and services. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye bye.